morning, school. There's a sort of air of anticipation and expectation here this morning, I see. I even got all the staff to come to assembly, so something's going right here this morning. Recently, we held our 120th school celebrations and a banquet, and at that banquet, there were a number of guest speakers, one of whom delivered a very compelling, invigorating and positive speech about our school. And I've invited that gentleman here this morning to address you uh, so that you can listen to that wonderful speech. In introducing our guest speaker, it is my pleasure to welcome Mr. David Munro here this morning and his wife, Lil. David matriculated in 1988, received academic and cultural colors, a team blazer for tennis, played in the second hockey side and in fact captained them. And then I see a little note here that he won the Mr. Nerd competition as well in 1988. Now today with the age of wokeism, you would never be able to run a competition uh, to find the greatest or best nerd. He was then further educated at the University of Cape Town where he attained a BCom and later went on and studied at Harvard University as well. Mm, yes, at Harvard, that Harvard. <laughs> Qualified as a chartered accountant, he served his articles at Deloitte and Tush, his three years there, and then he joined the Standard Bank Group in 1996, spent some time in London, and then served the Standard Bank Group for some 27 years including the roles of Chief Executive of the Corporate Investment Banking, the Group Chief Executive of Liberty Holdings, and has recently retired, but remains as Chairman of Stanlib Limited and the Director of Liberty Two Degrees. But more significantly for me, he is the father of three children, two of whom went to Kingsmead College, and one, a son, who is here with us at King Edward. He serves on the Educational Trust, and he and his wife, Lil, are great supporters of our school. It is my pleasure this morning to invite Mr. Munro to address us. Mr. Munro. Thank you very much. Headmaster, members of staff, Boys, good morning to you all. Mr. Lovett, thank you for the honor of addressing the school in this great hall in celebration of 120 years of excellence. And thank you, Mr. Lovett, for those very kind words of introduction. The history of King Edward VII School and you, the present generation of boys, is well populated by many great families that have contributed so much over the years, each in their special way. I would therefore like to dedicate these words this morning to every family that has chosen to send their son or sons to the school, whether first generation, one generation, or third or fourth generation. Likewise, I'd like to dedicate these words this morning to the incredible service to the school of the educators, staff members and headmasters over 120 years. Their contribution to our society and to the lives of the 20,000 odd boys that have attended the school is quite exceptional. As we reflect this morning, let's do it filled with immense gratitude to the current and past teachers, staff members and headmasters of our school and with appreciation for every family whose sons are from this place. Over 120 years, that combination has created what is one of the finest high schools in South Africa today. I wanna to say that again, King Edward VII School is one of the finest, if not the finest high school in our country. How did that happen? What is the meaning of this school? Why has it played such an outsized role in so many people's lives? Why does it inspire so much incredible pride and loyalty? Indeed, a love for the school that is unique. Is it the buildings and the grounds that give it identity and meaning? Or is it something deeper, more profound? When I ask why the school inspires such deep loyalty and pride in us, I mean every single one of us that form part of the Red Army. 
every one of us that is present here this morning, your parents and families, old boys, past staff members, and their families, friends of our school, indeed the entire King Edward community. So what is this magic that inspires so much? What does the school stir in our blood that calls us together and that unites us? What is it that makes us feel proud and that lifts our heads, that vibrates in our hearts, that stokes the flames of our bellies and that inspires the soaring of our souls? When you come to play or support a Reds or Red Sticks match, you will know what it is. When you attend an assembly like this morning or a valediction, when you stand or sit in the sun or the rain on a Sunday morning in November in the quadrangle, you will know what it is. If you are dropped off in a green blazer or if you pick that boy up later in the day, if you play, perform, speak, compete in the colors of our school, you will know what it is. If you're in this great hall of King Edward VII school this morning, you don't need me to tell you what it is. But this is a council meeting of our clan, an assembly of our army, the Red Army. And by God, I'm going to tell you why it is we love this school so much after 120 years. And more importantly, why we need to keep loving it right now at this very moment. We, the Red Army, will gather on these hallowed grounds tomorrow. At around midday, we will watch you boys as you occupy the stands on the southeast side of the Reds field. And we will listen to your war cries. I can picture it now. There will be a boy from amongst you, maybe he's here this morning with us, in a green or a red and white striped blazer with a red and white and green colored stick held in these very hands 35 years ago. That lone boy will shout, who are we? We are red. Who are we? We are red. I can hear it right now echoing in the souls of everyone in the Red Army. Who are we? We are red. So who are we? The we Red. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. Who are we? We are red. So who are we? The Red. <laughs> Allow me to fire in your imaginations to capture the images of what it means to be the Red. We are the Red jerseys on a winter afternoon, never ever giving up. We are the click of oars in a boat in the early morning mist the clatter of red sticks under ancient oaks. We are the sound of the bales being sprung by the ball, bowled from the biddly end as it castles into the wickets. We are Agamemnon dead, Atawalpa, Laotes, Hamlet, Macbeth. We are the heavy, heart-wrenching beat of the deep bass drum as 17-year-old boys solemnly march three abreast through the headmaster's entrance into the quadrangle and around the cenotaph. We are the notes of the last post, the silence of eternity, and the tears of the lament drifting off in the wind. We are the red and white that makes a monster. The red and white that makes a monster a monster. We are 67 green and gold tries in 124 matches, 10 flashes of brilliance at the 2007 Rugby World Cup to lift the trophy and inspire the hearts of a nation. We are three US Masters at Augusta National and three Open Championships and three other majors, all dressed in black. We are the bomb squad holding the board at the back of the mall, crushing the enemy over their line. The big number eight jersey destroying the Wallabies and everything else in his path. The 2012 Curry Cup winner wearing his number two jersey. We are 277 runs at Edgbaston, followed by 259 runs at Lords. We are a 415 run partnership against Bangladesh, the fastest Protea gloves to take 200 test wickets. We are 302 runs at Newlands and 85 runs at the Wanderers four weeks ago. We are the father and the grandfather who scored 13 centuries and 34 half centuries in 133 first-class matches. The doctor who transformed the sport 
Proteas, generation after generation after generation. You are the target of a lightning bolt on the John Hurry Field, on Wemapan. We are a bolt of lightning in green and gold, sprinting the Japan Olympics 400 meter track. The T63 100 meter Africa record shattered in the same stadium two weeks later at the Paralympics. The African Parabob jumping for kids. We are the pair of oars smashing the under 23 world record in Italy at the World Rowing Championships. The silver medal in the pairs at the Rio Olympics. We are 42 goals and the most caps ever for South Africa, 250 on the AstroTurf. The Bafana Bafana debutante against Namibia making his mark. We are 41 years of rugby coaching for new boys, immortalized by the name of the field on the south side of our school. Who are we? We are here. We are 500 meters of triumphs and laments along the River Tiber in Rome, in hallmark charcoal, black and white. We are the driving force behind the Chris Harney Baraguanath Hospital, becoming a world-class medical facility serving the people of Soweto. We are the trumpet on these streets. We are the Supreme Court making the Group Areas Act virtually unworkable. The first prosecutor in the International Criminal Court. We are the Queen's Counsel and the advocate of the High Court to three Nobel Peace Prize winners, Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela and Oliver Tambo. The voice of the words at the Steve Biko inquest, he died a miserable and lonely death on a cold prison floor. We are President Mandela's and the Rainbow Nation's First Minister of Finance. We are the transformation of the life insurance industry in South Africa and the United Kingdom, a world-class business school in Johannesburg and the top oncology hospital in the Southern Hemisphere. We are the reinvention of the global paper and pulp industry. We are miners, lawyers, financiers, bankers, investors, insurers, advisors, industrialists, constructors, farmers, artists, musicians, filmmakers, architects, technologists, educators, doctors, nurses, journalists, preachers, caregivers, and more. Who are we? We are men. We are the father and the son who walked to cricket every Saturday morning observing their faith. We are the team and the coaches that walked to fetch that boy for his last match. We are the mothers and the fathers, the sisters and the brothers, grandparents and family and friends turning out Presbyterian style to sit in those stands, home and away, rain or shine, supporting their sons, their brothers, their grandsons, their nephews, their friends. We are the quiet, efficient, overachieving mother dedicating her life to the Old Boys Association, knowing many of them by name. We are the King Edward's Educational Trust, building an endowment to the future of this school. We find a place in our hearts for 43 boys to have a home at King Edward VII School and nine girls at Parktown High School for Girls. We're an aquatic center fit for the Olympics, a clubhouse fit for a headmaster, a math center, science block, astroturf and boarding houses, library, cricket pavilion, bursaries for boys who will go on and change the world. Who are we? We, are we build, we grow. We're a torch in the hostel, Bino and a thousand more. We are the quenching teas, the first aiders, the flowers in the school hall on sad occasions. We are the 255 boys and masters, some as young as 17, who made the ultimate sacrifice on the fields of battle so that we could be here today. We will remember them. Who are we? We are men. We're as tough as nails. We support, we compete, we win. We support, we compete, we love, we cry, we win. We are the street fighters and we are gentle souls at the same time. The iron 
is always just below the velvet with us. And we never, ever give up. We give of our best. We reach down to give each other a hand up. We are a brotherhood and a sisterhood and a family. That is who we are, the Red Army. This and a million more images, too many to mention, that represents what this school has achieved and which describe what it is that we are capable of. That is who we are. And yet I say to you this morning that all that incredible achievement, all that unbelievable contribution to our society, all that success, triumph and all that sacrifice, it's not enough. Not for the times that we are living in. When you boys shout, we are red. When you shout, bury me with my Kez badge. When you sing the words, when we the Reds are here once more. When you crouch arm in arm and shout those famous words, Ichi Balaguta, Skitaramaduta. It is you boys that are the true office bearers and infantry, the artillery and the sappers of the Red Army. For without you, we are nothing. It is the green sea of 1,150 of you boys who enter and leave those beautiful new gates to the school every day that wear the red caps, that carry the red sticks, that run out dressed in the red jersey, that play in the under 14 G team and every team in between. It is you boys on the 2023 debating team, you boys acting in this year's school play, playing the pipes and the drums in the school band, you boys writing the Maths Olympiad. In the Photographic Society, it is the boys of 8G, 9B and 10C, 12F. It is the hijinks in the science lab, the inspiration of private, peaceful and mother to mother and to kill a mockingbird. The Tempest and Romeo and Juliet, the challenge of differentiation and integration and the uncertainty of Heisenberg. You, the boys of 2023 and 2024 and the lures that lie ahead, it is you who the, are the office bearers and the infantry of the Red Army that we truly care about today. For it is you that inherit the gifts of 120 years of history. And it is you who create the fibers that continue to extend the rope that is the King Edward VII school. That is an awesome responsibility. And it's to the commander and his phalanx of generals, the coaches and guides, educators, professionals, teachers, ground staff and trainers that lead the daily engagement as we prepare the boys and young men of this school today for our world. It is to you that I give my salute this morning. To you I give my thanks. To you we give our trust, for it is in your hands that the future of our Red Army lies. What an awesome opportunity. As my grandfather, we used to call him Opa, as he said at his farewell, having taught mathematics at this school for 47 years, he said, once you join King Edwards, you never leave. And so it is for you boys that this school exists that the 120 years has meaning. It is for your hopes and dreams and aspirations. It is for you to learn to succeed, to belong, to be part of something bigger than yourselves. It is for you to be dipped in red. So that when you sit at the council of the elders of this army, when you matriculate to join our ranks and emerge to take on the world and make your mark on it, it is then that you will know the heartache of examining your souls and testing your commitment to the battle cries of the Red Army. It is then that you will ask of yourselves, as have 120 generations of boys before you, are we worthy? For you boys already know the ultimate rally cry of the teddy bears, the words emblazoned on all of our hearts and imprinted on the cold granite of our Senatov. Sons of this place, let this of you be said, that you who live 
are worthy of your dead. That is why 120 years is important because it brought us to this very moment. To you 1,150 1, boys in this school today, it is for you that we give our thanks. It is for you that we honor and acknowledge and celebrate 120 years. It is for you that every one of us in the Red Army upholds our commitment to be worthy sons of this place. Indeed worthy teachers, coaches, headmasters of this place, worthy daughters, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, families and friends of this place that we call school. And it is to you that I speak this morning, boys. It is to you that I throw down the challenge to be worthy sons of this place. When your moment comes, when your time arrives, when you carry the banner of this school into the future and preserve the story of our school for the generations of boys that will come after you. And under normal or under ordinary circumstances, I would say thank you. And that would be that for this morning from me. However, something extraordinary happened in my life that I would like to share with you today. As Mr. Lovett said, I had the privilege to lead the Liberty Group, a large financial services company, as chief executive for the last five years that it was independent and listed separately on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange before it was bought out by Standard Bank Group a year ago. I want to share with you the extraordinary story, some may call it a predictable miracle, of why I took that job when it was offered to me in 2017 and what it meant to me. My story starts 38 years ago. Liberty Life was the fifth largest company on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange at the time, having been founded only 27 years before by Sir Donald Gordon, an old boy of our school. Liberty was a massive empire built on his deep belief that everyone should have the opportunity to strive for financial freedom in their lives. The opportunity of dignity and retirement and to be freed of the burden of financial worries. In that same year of 1985, Donald Gordon approached my grandparents. We called him Omar and Opa, who at the time were retired, living in Sandringham on a state pension and teaching extra maths lessons to get by. Donald Gordon came round to their home and explained to my opa that he had learned the power of compounding in my opa's maths classroom at the school. And upon those lessons, upon that knowledge and the power of compound interest, he had gone on to build liberty into what it was at that time. To express his appreciation to my grandparents, he offered to pay them a life pension to cover their expenses for the rest of their lives. His version of financial freedom or liberty. My Oma and Opa indeed lived the rest of their lives in peace and with dignity. My Opa for four years and my Oma for a further 21 years. All told, Donald Gordon provided my grandparents with his vision of liberty for 25 years in return for what he had learnt in my opa's maths classroom right here in this school. This is the story of a great son of this place, worthy. And it's the story I'm proud to tell today in this great hall. It is also the story of why I gave up my job at Standard Bank over a weekend to become the Chief Executive of Liberty, to do my best to restore the dignity, health and competitiveness of that great company and to honour Sir Donald Gordon in my own way for what he had done for my family. Just like this morning, I was proud to tell that story of my grandparents to Sir Donald's family in the evening after his funeral, as his family and friends gathered at one of their son's homes. Lil, my wife and I were meeting almost all of them for the very first time. And we had had no time to even introduce ourselves Incredibly, the family present had always known that their father had committed to this incredible act of generosity 
but they had never known who the beneficiaries were nor why he had done so. In that moment of sharing our family stories, several circles finally closed for them. Before I started to tell them the story, most of them did not even know that I was the Chief Executive of Liberty at the time. Having the opportunity to speak today in front of the school has given me the opportunity to close another circle for our families by telling this story to the Red Army in this, its home. So to everyone present here this morning, you boys, sons of this place, educators, coaches and staff of this place, headmaster of this place, you too have stories such as these in your lives. Tell them and inspire others by what the Red Army is capable of, its predictable miracles. More importantly, you have the opportunity and potential to write these kinds of stories into the future, to have an impact far beyond what you thought was possible, to be inspiring, to change lives, to reach your potential and to go beyond, simply by answering that call of the teddy bears, sons of this place, let this of you be said, that you who live are worthy of your dead. Boys, wear that green blazer with pride. And tomorrow, when that boy with the red and white and green stick shouts, who are we? And you respond, who are we? We are red. Who are we? We are red. Then not only are you saluting your comrades on the field, you are also saluting the sons of this place of the last 120 years. You are saluting their achievements, their successes and their sacrifices, big and small. You are saluting the headmasters, educators and staff of this place, the coaches and groundsmen, and you are saluting the mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers and friends of this place. Boys, you are saluting the Red Army and the Red Army will salute you back. Who are we? We are Red. Who are we? We are Red. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. School! One, two, three! Everyone, you trust me, you trust